Hi there, I'm Michael. Welcome to Meeple Box for Machi Koro, a light little city building game of dice rolling. The way this game works is on your turn, you'll roll a dice. Whatever number that comes up dictates then what happens for all the players. You see, you start with these two buildings. The wheat field is blue. This means it will trigger on anyone's turn. And the number at the top tells you what dice roll that will trigger on. So if anyone rolls a one, every person gets a one from the bank. And you'll use this money after you've collected it to then buy more buildings. And the cost is given in the bottom left. Now, different buildings will do different things. For example, the other building you start with is the bakery. And this will allow you to get one coin from the bank, but only on your turn, because it's a green building. Any green buildings only trigger for you when you roll that on your turn. The other colours we have here are red, and unsurprisingly, these are the mean buildings. The red buildings trigger when any other player rolls the dice. If you've got a red building, you'll take money from the player who rolled the dice. The purple buildings are then special buildings. So each one of those is different, and you can only have one copy of each of those buildings. Whereas the others, you can buy multiple copies. So I could have a ton of wheat fields, and then when someone rolls one, I get a ton of cash. But what's the purpose of the game then? Okay, you're building up your city as you take turns, but to what end? Well, the first person who completes all of these constructions that they start with wins the game. And again, the cost of these is given in the bottom left. As you complete them, you'll turn them over and to their completed, coloured up side, and you gain the ability. So at the beginning of the game, you're only rolling one dice. When you unlock your train station, you can then choose to roll two dice. This is important because the values of the things triggering go up to 12, but at the beginning of the game, you can only roll up to a six. So that's how the game works. First person to afford to buy all of their constructions will win the game. Let's take a look at what reviewers think of this game. Hello, welcome to Board Deck and Dice's contribution for Meeple Box, where we are looking at Machi Koro. Machi Koro is not in front of me, two other games are. And that's because I no longer own Machi Koro. Machi Koro was one of my early buys as I really got into the uh, board game scene. Um, and I loved it. I loved the dice rolling, the th fact that you could... Um, you know, go risky and go for numbers that don't come up so much, or you could go safe and buy numbers that are activated on other people's turns. Um, and I love the kind of city building elements of it. As I got more into the hobby and discovered more games, Machi Koro lost a lot of its appeal for me because there was just a little bit too much randomness in the dice. The fact that you had to choose to use both dice or not, you couldn't make decisions after you'd rolled the dice and the game just went on a little bit long for my liking and was essentially a race to get enough money to turn over all four of the, um, the main buildings, I forgot what they were called. So it did kind of lose a lot for me. The expansions helped to, to an extent, especially with the set out in the middle but there was something that was lost for me with that, which was only compounded when I discovered Dice City and Card Kingdoms of Valeria. So, Machi Koro, would I recommend it? I would recommend it for people who are starting out want something light that will get them into more uh, strategic games. Or, what I really recommend is you get a friend to buy it and then play theirs through your board with it. If you like the city building elements, then the game you're going to want to get is Dice City, which has dice rolling, city building elements, but also you can mitigate the dice rolls. You can do things to change those dice rolls. Yes, it will cost you something, but you can do more of what you want. Or, if you like the mechanics in Machi Koro, then I recommend Valeria Card Kingdoms, because 
it has the same basic mechanics except you're always rolling two dice. You get stuff on everyone's go regardless of um, the cards just give you, give you resources on everyone's go and you take both dice's numbers and then you add them together so you're potentially activating three cards on each uh, on everybody's go and it just plays like a kind of um, adrenaline, more adrenaline fueled matchy curry. You could argue there's less decisions, less hard decisions because you're just getting so many resources but there are strategies within there. There's end scoring cards which affect what you kind of prioritise and it plays a lot quicker. So matchy curry, a good game but one that is not in my collection anymore. Um, partly because I've moved on but partly because of these two games too. Thanks very much for watching, we'll see you again next time. Hello and welcome to A Throne of Games. Today I'm talking about Magic Horror and why you should buy it. Magic Horror is so easy to play. You roll the dice, the players check their cards to see which cards activate, you do the actions and if you want you can buy a new card. That's it, you can play Magic Horror. You can see how much I've played this game by the state of the coins. I've had this game described to me as Monopoly but fun. And that's exactly what it is. You get your economic mechanisms together, you cross your fingers, and then laugh manically as you get yet more money from the bank, or rinse your friends, or sob into your tea as you go bankrupt yet again. And yes, there is a lot of luck in this game, so it might not be for everyone. You can have all the mines, but if no one rolls a nine, you're not going to make any money. But that just means you need to think a little harder about your approach. When to roll one die, when to roll two. When to go for red or purple buildings, when to go for green or blue ones. When to block people, when to save money, when to spend it. So there are options for being tactical within this game. I highly recommend Machi Koro, but if you do buy it, then please also consider the expansion, the harbour. It adds a load more playability, a load more options, and is a really good purchase. The other expansion, Millionaire's Row, you can take it or leave it. But if you're going to get the base game, then strongly consider getting the expansion of the harbour to get the most out of it. Machi Koro gets a big thumbs up from, from me. me. If you want more reviews, please go to my website, www.athroneofgames.wordpress.com. Thanks for watching. Hi, Russell here from the Black Cat Pop Culture Blog, here to talk about Machi Koro, a city building game where each building has its advantages and disadvantages. So, the entire game is based around a series of dice rolls, where each time one of the numbers that you have comes up, you get coins towards getting even more buildings. So I'm fond of the art style in this game, it has a really nice aesthetic and it's a fun game for all ages and it's a really simple game to play. It's quick. It does suffer from a couple of issues. Two things really. First one is with the mechanics which rely heavily on chance. This can affect the early game as it can be multiple turns in a row where no action can be taken and nothing really happens just because of unlucky dice rolls. The second is a common problem in, in gaming which is choice paralysis. This comes after a few lucky dice rolls actually. You have a lot of coins in the bank and you're trying to figure out where to spend them. Potentially, you could have up to 21 different possibilities to spend your coins on. So it does make it difficult to decide where to make your next move. And also, later in the later stages of the game, you'll find that you're trying to work out what you have, what you don't have, and if the dice roll actually corresponds to anything on your table. As a result, you can find that you will be spending more time looking at your cards, trying to figure out and resolve the last move, than actually taking your turn. So overall, 
this is a fun game. I can't give it a solid recommendation, as I think it lacks a lot of longevity, and there are a couple of things holding it back from being great. So, thanks to Michael and the team at Two Can Play That Game, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's at Russ W. Wilkinson. Thanks. Machi Koro is quick, it is simple, it is light, it is fun. That is what this game is. I really do enjoy it and love it. It's just so simple, it's so easy to teach, it's so easy for people to play. The game has excitement. It is a game that is basically gambling. That is what this game is. You are buying, placing bets on certain numbers coming out. When you're buying these cards, that is what you are doing. And then when those numbers come out, Ka-ching! Your money is in. That is what this game comes down to. It is random, it is light, it is fun. There's no other way to describe it. I, I can't understand people who have a problem with this. Okay, that is except for one small factor. You're playing with these same market cards every time. Okay, there's 15 of them, there's quite a lot of them. Different people might buy different cards. You might go for different strategies. You can go for that's what a lot of the strategy comes down to this there is strategy it is to do with what risks you take you see you can go for the big payoffs of the numbers that won't necessarily come up very often but when they do come up you get a big score or you can spread yourself across all the different numbers and try and cover your bases and just get a little bit all the time those are different strategies you can play in this but you're always going to be having those same cards you're going to play those few strategies. Okay, the luck of the dice means that it won't always work out. You know, one game, one personal player strategy, and score big and win big. You try the exact same thing the next game, and it doesn't work. But the game feels the same. You feel like you've done that, you've been there, you've tried that. That's the one problem with this. But it has an expansion, the Harbour expansion. There are actually more expansions as well. But the Harbour expansion just does what this game needs. It adds even more randomness. It adds a ton more cards that you then take all of your market, you shuffle it together, and you then have a random market. What this means is you're not necessarily going to be able to do the same strategy every time. It means that you do have to move outside of your comfort zone, take risks that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise take. Now, some people will dislike that, but for me, it just adds new life to this game and means that replay value is no longer an issue. And don't get me wrong, the base game has good replay value. You can easily get 20, 30 plays before you start to feel that it's a bit samey. Add this in and you're talking upwards of 50 odd plays before you start having an issue. And it does add other little bits as well. But yeah, Machikura I think is a great game, add in Harbour and it's even better. And there you have it, a collection of opinions on Machikura and the Meeple Box contributors. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as the contributors channels. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.